Dear friends, today's feast of the baptism of the Lord commemorates the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River by John the Baptist and also marks the beginning of ordinary time. The baptism was one of the key events in Jesus' life. It is so significant that it has been recorded in all the four Gospels. To understand the meaning and implications of Jesus' baptism, we shall first briefly look at the context. Friends, the Bible tells us that God chose Abraham, a man of righteousness and faith, to carry out his plan of saving all mankind and made a covenant with him. The covenant was that Abraham would trust and obey God and in return God would bless him with the land and children and the covenant would extend far beyond Abraham's own lifetime to involve his descendants as well. In the course of time, the descendants of Abraham through his son Isaac and grandson Jacob became the nation of Israel and were known as Israelites. Unfortunately, the Israelites began to break the covenant and suffer the consequences. But God remained faithful to his covenant promise. He did not abandon them. When they cried out to him in their distress, he saved them even while they were living in sin and then renewed the covenant that he initially made with Abraham. Moreover, in his great mercy, he sent numerous prophets to deliver messages of instruction and correction as well as words of hope, comfort and encouragement. Friends, since the time of prophet Isaiah, the central message of the prophets was the coming of the Messiah, which had been in fact in the plan of God from the time of Adam and which the Israelites had been looking forward anxiously. Malachi, who lived 400 years before the birth of Christ, was the last of the Old Testament prophets to foretell the coming of Jesus Christ and his forerunner. Friends, the Bible tells us that after Malachi, there were 400 years of silence from God. That is to say, the Israelites had no prophets, no special revelations, no word from the Lord. Friends, it is hard to imagine that the people who had been obtaining for centuries directions and guidance from God's messengers were without a prophet to guide them for such a long time. This silence ended when God sent a new prophet, John the Baptist, to prepare the way for the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Friends, according to the Gospels, John was born to devout Jewish parents, Zechariah and Elizabeth, six months before Jesus, and he mostly lived in obscurity until 30 years of age, as did Jesus. He began preaching in the Judean desert, a little before Jesus began his, probably six months earlier. He was calling people to repent and confess their sins and then receive baptism as a sign of transformation so that they could escape the wrath of God that was to come upon Christ's coming and instead inherit a place in Christ's kingdom. Lots of people from Judea, Jerusalem and the surrounding regions went to hear John. Friends, hearing John's powerful preaching and symbolic action of baptism, many people wondered if John might be Christ the Savior. Friends, an important note here is that water baptism by full immersion in water existed even prior to John's time. Since an earlier time, the Jews knew and were used to baptism. They themselves did not submit to it because only the Gentile converts to Judaism were required to undergo baptism as part of their conversion. The Jews believed that immersion in water was necessary to make the converts pure. But John was calling for the Jews to admit that they were sinners and needed to get baptized in water as a sign of their repentance. Friends, responding to people's expectations John clearly said that 
he was not the Messiah, but only the forerunner of the Messiah. He further humbly acknowledged that he was not worthy to loosen the thongs of Christ's sandals. Friends, loosening or untying sandals was something only slaves did. Under the moral law of the Israelites, Jewish slaves were not required to wash the feet of their masters, but the Gentile slaves must do so. In Jesus' case, John felt that he was not even worthy to do that. Friends, Luke writes that as John was baptizing the people, Jesus too went to be baptized. Some might ask the question, if John preached a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, and those who came to him therefore were repentant sinners, then why had Jesus, who was sinless, gone to John to be baptized? Friends, there are three reasons for that. Firstly, by submitting himself to the baptism administered by John the Baptist, Jesus expressed his humility and obedience to the will of his Father. Secondly, Jesus allowed himself to receive John's baptism to show his solidarity with the sinful humankind, which he came to save. In lining up for baptism like a sinner, Jesus set aside all exemption for himself and completely identified with sinners. By being baptized, Jesus publicly demonstrated that he was in need of repentance and forgiveness himself although he had no need of it in actuality. Thirdly, Jesus accepted to be baptized to sanctify the waters of baptism. He entered and sanctified the water with his very flesh so that our sins are washed away and that we become free from sin and acquire the state of holiness and grace. Friends, Luke then writes, after his baptism, while Jesus was praying, the heaven was open and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. Friends, this was an extraordinary manifestation or a revelation of who Jesus is. It manifested the threefold presence of God. The Spirit was seen in the form of a dove, and the Son was affirmed by the Father. God's voice must have really encouraged Jesus to know that his Father was happy with him. Thenceforth, everything which Jesus did was to obey his Father. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. Friends, Nothing Jesus did was outside of God's will. He knew that he had to die so that our sins could be forgiven and we could have eternal life. Friends, what is the message for us? 1. Before we ask God for anything, we must first give thanks and praise to Him for everything, and not just for what God does, but who He is. We must, first and foremost, rejoice and thank Him for the greatest gift of all, His Son Jesus Christ, who humbly identified Himself with us, sinners, and who, at His baptism, obediently began His work of saving us, and eventually accomplished eternal redemption for us on the cross. 2. It is not sufficient to privately acknowledge our belief in Christ but it is important to go public with our faith. And so, by being immersed in water or getting baptized, we make known to people that we have become children of God, that we follow Jesus Christ, that we have given ourselves up to God, that we have promised to obey and submit to God, and that we are members of the Church. 3. Friends, just as Jesus' baptism was the beginning of a new chapter in his life and the beginning of his ministry, so also is our baptism the starting point of a lifelong path to conversion. Our baptism calls us to die to sin, 
to die to self and to be reborn into new life in Christ, no longer as just children of the world, but now as children of God. 4. As we commemorate our Lord's baptism, it is essential that we remember our own baptism and affirm this most important event in our lives. But unfortunately, many of us may not get excited about it anymore. We probably cannot also remember any of the details of our baptism because we were baptized as infants. However, we can remember it in a different way. Friends, every time we dip our finger into the holy water font at the entrance to the church and make the sign of the cross, let us consciously and devoutly recall our baptism, our union with Christ and our baptismal promises and then ask the Lord to cleanse us of every sin, heal our infirmities, and strengthen us in our sufferings. 5. Friends, God may not always be well pleased with us, but I believe that He will look down with an approving smile when He sees us trying to walk with His Son, Jesus. Let us therefore make use of the opportunities God gives us for new beginnings. Let us repent for our sins and dedicate ourselves to living a new life in Christ. Amen. God bless you.